Reef Tube, what's up? So I made my short the other day about my DIY algae reactor. Um, it runs Chato in it. And I figured I'd do just like an overview, kind of, so people can see it. Um, I'm going to get in front of the camera a couple of times, just so you know. So it's kind of one of those things, like, it's not the best shot, but it'll do. So, over on the left side, over here, you can see I have my timer, power supply hooked into my timer. goes over to the algae reactor. Um, all, the al all, the timer, all the timer does is run my lights. My pump goes through it, is running all the time. Um, pump is plugged in over here on my power strips. Smart power strip, by the way, absolutely one of the best things you can buy, I think, for a reef tank. Uh, you can control your whole entire reef tank just from your phone. Um, that being said, we'll, we'll go over that at a different time. Um, lights is just a, I think it's a 16 foot, um, red spectrum. Well, like refu refugium spectrum, um, lighting, uh, to grow, you know, plants and stuff. Uh, all I did was, you know, wrap it tightly around the reactor. The reactor is anything that's clear and cylindrical that can be sealed off and easily removed. That's the way I can best describe it. Um, uh, I didn't look for like a certain one. I just go off of, you know, well, what is a good price and what am I willing to pay for it? Um, this one came with pump and reactor plus it came with bio pellets but i don't use bio pellets i don't do all that um but so pump and reactor i think it was like 50 dollars plus shipping off of ebay it was used you don't need to go new on any of this it does none of that matters it just needs to be able to be clear for you to be able to have light penetrate through to grow your chato um this is the inlet right here it the pump sits inside my first chamber on the back side of the fluval. Um, I have a bag of carbon on top of it and then a filter, um, filter floss, which I have pre-cut right here in my little storage up top. So it's super easy for me to change out. It's all within a foot of the tank. This is a closet I have behind my tank is, is, a uh, bit of an odd setup where they have like a you know the people who were here before me they put this cutout I'm not really sure maybe it was for a TV we have our TV there but this is our spare bedroom office workout my shipping area for my job like it's a multi-use room um that being said let's get back to the reactor uh so goes in I don't have I do have a ball valve on this end right here you can't see it but it's right behind my hand um, I don't know why I installed it because I don't even use it I don't turn it down I have as much flow as I can going through it at all times and I think I have my timer now set up on I think it's 11 hours and it starts at 11 o'clock at night and goes a little past the light coming on in the morning I think it goes till 10 so it helps raise the pH after it goes down tries I'm trying to keep like a level plane of pH um, it's easy for me to be able to see because I have an apex junior um, let me see here you can see the apex junior right there and I have a pH probe and then my temperature probe in there. Um, and that's really all I wanted it for was basically, is my tank still running temperature wise or is it too hot? It'll also tell you if you lost power at the house when I'm gone, which is nice because I got my buddy um, Levi, FishGuy207 on YouTube. Check out his videos if you guys uh, want to see like another fluval setup, but... 
yeah, if anything happens, he only lives like a few miles away and he's more than willing to come in. We've known each other since we were like five. So shout out to him. He's willing to help anytime and uh, he's willing to learn and I'm willing to still learn. There's always things you're willing, you, you, you're learning about this hobby. Um, but the reactor was super easy. You know, the ones you see online, like for sale, are, you know, $400, and in reality, who really wants to spend $400 when you can make this for less than 100 and I could be wrong, but I think it probably performs better, and if it was to break, it's cheaper to replace parts, um, it's super easy to clean, uh, you know, every two weeks, I'll, you guys seen the video, I'll take the algae scrubber downstairs and I'll rip half of the chato out and throw it away and then all I do is on the inside I take a uh, magic eraser and I go down and I scrub the inside because it grows a film on the inside of the the um, I don't want to call it glass because it's not glass it's like Lexan or Plexi or whatever it is um, but it grows a film on the inside it's like a brown film so it kind of lessens the penetration of light so i just clean that out um do a quick rinse and then bring it back upstairs and all good to go um and it was super easy to build these tubes i think i got from my local hardware store i think three feet is more than i needed and i think i paid maybe i don't know ten dollars ten fifteen dollars um I did use um, screw-on metal hose clamps because they're not in the water, so they don't leach anything. No water touches them. Uh, so, I mean, water will touch them if, you, you know, if you're messy or whatever, but, I mean, it, this system is really not that hard. When it comes to emptying it, that is a different story. So whenever I have to take this off, I take this tube which is the return, I take it out, wipe off the end, and I simply blow in it until all the water, or majority of the water, comes out, and it goes all the way back here. After that is done, I'll take off my feed line. Again, this is all turned off, so there's no pro no water coming. The iHome uh, power strip right there makes it super easy to be able to do all this stuff on my phone. You just press a button real quick on the app, turns off the algae reactor pump, you're back at it. So this is turned off. I blew all the water out back into the system. This is during a water change, so the system's low already on water. I take the hose clamp off right here, disconnect the light down bottom, it's just a simple plug-in, and then I bring it downstairs, and I do my cleaning. I have these Velcro strips on it right here because it is kind of bright. And at night, it is, you know, it looks like you have a grow room inside your house. So if you don't want that, you can get vinyl. This is a vinyl sheet right here that I didn't pull the backing off. And you just wrap it around and it has white on the inside, black on the outside. Simply just Velcro it. It keeps all the light inside the the uh, algae reactor, and it might actually help performance too because it's got that white sheet that kind of pushes light back towards it. Um, at first, this this reactor didn't do what I wanted it to do. Um, it basically it was mostly just the tank. I don't think I had enough nutrients. I wasn't feeding enough, and um, my buddy Paul who lives probably, I call him my buddy, I've met him a few times, it was, I bought Chato off of him, and then I seen his reef tank, and he's got a gorgeous 150 gallon reef tank, a, a basement sump, and you know, it's one of those tanks that you dream about, and maybe one day I'll get another big tank, but it's been years since I've had a big tank, and I call my big tank, I had a 40 breeder, I like the smaller tanks, they're a little easier to manage, um, nonetheless, this man has a basement sump set up. It's, the sump is almost better looking than the tank. That's how gorgeous it is. But 
the Chato died off on me. It melted down. I think I had maybe four strands left. So I decided I'll use some knitting mesh. Put that on the inside in here. And I attached it via um, zip ties to the top. There's a little plastic ring on the inside you can attach it to. And I was just going to use it as an algae reactor that grew, you know, turf algae. And it did. It started to grow alva. It had green hair algae on it. Had a bunch of stuff. Well, then the Chato, one few little strands that were still left in there, the Chato grew out on this and just took over. So I decided, well, taking this out, and I'm just going to use it for Chato. And... This will pack itself full of Chato in two weeks. Um, I believe wholeheartedly that an algae reactor or scrubber is one of the biggest, I guess you would say, buffers for like a newbie hobbyist or somebody who likes to feed heavy. Um, it literally will... I don't even want to say this because some people might take it out of context, but it will, it'll stop making fish tanks or reef tanks hard for you. Um, you virtually don't have any quote unquote ugly phase. I did have a high breakout of Alva in this tank. I mean, all my rocks were covered in Alva. Alva is sea lettuce. And I put this on. And once it started, you know, ripping out the nutrients, that alva just about melted away. I do have a bubble algae problem going on inside the tank right now, but that is something that is more of a manual removal and crabs. Crabs don't like my tank at the moment, so I don't know. I'm pretty much stuck with manual removal and trying to get as much nutrients out of the tank, maybe less than my feeding. Um... And all that really comes down to is all I do is I stop feeding my corals. Because corals get majority of their nutrition through light. Um, using photosynthesis. I'm sure everybody kind of has an idea of how corals get majority of their nutrients. Um, but that being said, I wanted to just show you guys this. I think, you know, just a quick breakdown again. The light, I think, was $15 plus shipping. Um, I don't know if the power supply came with it. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. Reactor with pump, 50 plus shipping. So you're talking less than $100. And Chato. <laughs> People buy Chato off of, you know, Algae Barn or whatever it is. And that's, you know, good to support that business or whatever. But more than likely, you can make friends with people who have Chato right in their system that is full of life this chato came from paul it had um snails in it it had pods it had tons of life in it and i put that into my system and my system you know never went backwards did the chato kind of die off for the most part yes it did but it still had a little patch i mean the patch was probably this big maybe the size of a silver dollar and it slowly grew, and once it started taking off, I mean, it really took off. And now I, every two weeks, I get a full, you know, full algae reactor. I have to break it up and split it up, and it's pretty solid. Um, but this is my algae reactor in my little fish closet. I got, it's right behind the tank. Nothing special, but it keeps my, you know quote-unquote organized I have my drawers for my random miscellaneous stuff that I keep um, you got tubes another power cord I got um, Teflon tape if I need it my foods my dips my iodine my bio um, sorry my biological I don't even know what it is actually yeah, biological booster. I use this to help cycle the tank. It worked great. I've um, got my calc washer in here. I have matrix media. Again, this is my closet. I have shipping stuff in here. So it's kind of a mess, but it I try to keep it as organized as possible. Um, this right here is 
just a small little mini fridge. Keep my food and my AB plus in there. Um, if I thaw out some food, it's good for like three days. I'll just leave it in the cup that I have. Uh, a local, I don't even want to call it local because it's about two hours away from us or from me. They give out these cups which they store or they ship um, coral frags in, which honestly is genius, really. And uh, I just keep them. I use all my stuff. You know, I go and rinse out my tester tubes for it and all that. Just, you know, it's basic stuff. Um, and try to keep it as organized as possible so it's not a f clutter of crap everywhere. Um, this is my test kit. I, again, I I don't go crazy over testing. My biggest thing that I test for is um, elk, which I use a Hanna checker for. Uh, this system right here, the API, honestly, the API works pretty good for elk. So if you're ever in the boat and you know you don't, everybody says don't use API. Well, API works for pH and elk and you know, nitrates, it's pretty good too. Uh, phosphate, it doesn't get ultra low levels, so it's kind of hard to predict, you know, phosphates. But again, I, I don't really, I don't really pay too much attention to those. I do, I do test them, but when you got an algae reactor, it pretty much runs the system on virtually no nutrients. I mean, you can dial it back by how much you have the light on, but my biggest thing is elk. I check elk and pH. That's what I stick to. My um, salinity, elk, pH, and temperature. Other than that, that's really it. Um, I'll do a quick little shot of the tank so you guys can see it real quick for today at the end of the video. And uh, we'll head out. Well, this one might be a little weird, but this is, you know... Usually I have my video set up through like the Pro series on this phone where you can like really get it so it looks like what the tank looks like. Um, but anyways, this is shot through the filter. My Nano Flipper Nano magnifying with the orange filter. Um, yeah, you can see the power head on the back, the Hiker power head, my random flow generators, the SPS up top, and got a little coral battle going on right there between my Favia and my um, Montipora, encrusting Monty, the Rainbow Monty, and, you know, just give you guys a little view of the tank, and if you have any questions about the algae reactor, or, you know, maybe my what I run my Hyger on, or, you know, anything, just, you know, shoot me a question in the comments, and, uh, give me a like, or subscribe on the video, and I'll try and catch you guys in the next one, and we'll see what we have then.